Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. Uh, today, um, we're going to continue with our multiplayer tic-tac-toe um, series, so let's get into it. In the last episode, what we did was, we pretty much just rendered the field itself. Oh, let's run this, and here's what you're gonna get. Just to get back what we've made, so, oops, I ran the wrong thing, sorry, it's what I've, it's when I've been preparing for uh, making the making it all continue. This is what we get, and now we're going to be we're going to make we're going to make an array in which we're going to store the data about the fields, which player pressed in which field, and then we're going to be rendering them. And that's what we're going to do in this episode. So let's get started with it. The first thing we need to do is uh, fix one mistake that I made here, and the field width is going to be equals to width divided by three, simply just to make the code look better. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a two-dimensional array, so it's going to be a private integer array, and it's going to be called fields, pretty much like this. Pretty much what this is going to do is it's going to be a two-dimensional array that's going to store which player um, pressed and which field, and to pretty much just um, initialize it, I just said, say fields is equals to new int, with the sizes three times three, of course, because we have because our field is three times three. What we want to do right now is just m make a few variables about it. So wait, private or public? I'm gonna make it public. So public static final int, and this first one is going to be player one. So let's call it player one. And actually, no. This one is going to be free. So when the when nobody press in the field, it's gonna be zero. Player one is going to be with one, and player two is going to be two. This is pretty much um, what it's gonna be. So in the beginning, when you initialize an array, it starts with zero. If a player one presses, we're gonna set this to one, and if player two presses, we're gonna set it to two. That's basically it. And what we need to do now is we need to render it in our game window right here. However, we don't really know what we yet want to render. So what I do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make a new package in game, and I'm going to call it resources. Right here, this we're going to create a class which is going to handle loading resources for the game such as um, textures and sounds. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to add sounds yet. Maybe we will. I don't know. We'll see about that. But for now, it's going to be pretty much um, textures. So let's give this class. First thing we want to do is we're going to create a private static um, buffered image. Buffered image is nothing else but the way that Java stores. I'm sorry, uh, my clips lag for some reason. Um, it's pretty much the way that Java stores images. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to call it load image. This is going to take a string cloth of the image. And loading images is very easy. All we've got to do is go to image io dot read read. And we're just gonna have to. Wait, I'm not sure. Read image. I'm um, no. I think it's read. Yeah. I haven't really written this for quite a kind of time, so really. And uh, now to access the file, we need to go to class. Class. I'm not entirely sure why this happens. Uh, get resource. Get resource. And we just want to give it the path right here. This is pretty much just going to read the image, and we're having some exceptions right here. And I think that's because we need to add the extra catch. Yeah, let's add extra catch. And just to, well, get a server just say return all if it doesn't happen. Also, if it doesn't happen, we're pretty much just going to want to exit the game. So we're just going to exit it with the parameter of, I'm not sure what's wrong with my clips. I'm so sorry. Um, with the parameter of minus one, which pretty much means that something went wrong. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to just create a private buffered image and make sure that they are public. And so we're going to do public static buffered images. And here we're just going to put all the stuff that we pretty much load. So here I'm just going to call this 
letters, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. And for this, what I'm going to do is actually I'm just gonna leave it like that, and now we're going to use the static initializer right here to initialize them. So letters is going to be equals to new buff word image to initialize the array. It's going to have two images in there. One is going to be for X and one is going to be for O. <clears throat> now we are pretty much just going to set letters um, zero, which is the first element, to load image. And the path is going to be, we're just going to make that now. So in our tic-tac-toe tutorial right there, I'm just going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it res much for putting in the resources. So what we want to do right now is I have these two letters right there. I have them there, so I'm just going to, oops, I'm just going to copy them. I'm going to paste them right here. Pretty much you can just download any images of X and of O, really, it doesn't matter. Just download yourself any X or O images and we're pretty much going to be all right. So this is what I've got, <laughs> X and O, and we're pretty much done there, really. So, <clears throat> now we're just going to add it to the, to the class path, and pretty much what that does is, it pretty much just lets us use it from in our project. So we want to add the resources folder in there to add those images to the class path. Once that's done, we're pretty much right here, and we, as the path, we don't want to say res, because it's in our class path, so we don't have to specify res, slash, we just say slash, and we put x.png. Next thing we've got to do is say letters, one is equals to load image, sorry, and here we're just going to put o.png just download some of them by yourself it doesn't really matter <clears throat> and these are our letters right now now once we got them here so all our fields are by default at the zero or free and what we want to do right now is go into our game window and our game window will now in its constructor take in the uh the game so let's make that I'm gonna make a private game instance out there and pretty much just to this in the constructor. So this game is equals to game. <clears throat> and I wanna pass it in there, so set it like that. And oops, this, I'm sorry. And what we've gotta do right now is use that. So to make any use of this, we wanna create a getter or to be able to get this variable from outside the class so we're just going to create a public um, integer uh, I mean an array get fields and return fields and this is pretty much just going to let them you know, let us get uh, the variable in the game window let's see how long it is uh, we're recording oh nine, <laughs> nine minutes already okay um, we should hurry up Kind of. So what we want to do right now <clears throat> is we first want to get its. So to get the position at which it should be rendered, we're gonna have to get its position in the array. So pretty much the its position in array is zero, one, or one, one, two, two. It's pretty much a two-dimensional array. We need to get its position in the array, and then we need to multiply it by the field width and the field height to then get the. Um, to get how big it should be rendered and where it should be rendered. So to do this, we're just gonna make a way to loop through them. So I'm gonna make an x is equals to zero. Um, x is so x is equals to s is less than field game dot field or width. So here we wanna set three actually because, well, it has three things in the array, and we want to say x++ plus plus to make sure that it adds one. Now we're just going to use the same for y. Like that. 
and we just need to loop through them. Oh, we've looped through them. We need to get the element, so we're just going to get an end field is equals to game. I'm um, sorry. Game dot get fields, and right here we need to get the x and the y of it. Now, once we have the field, we just need to render it where it should be. So to do this, we need to use gtd dot um, wait, what um, gtd uh, dot draw image, and we're going to use the one that lets us specify the x, y width, and height. So the image needs to be one from the resources. The way to find that out is we're going to get the uh, we're going to get the which which player pressed it. So let's just access the resources, and now we need to go to letters. These are our images, and to get which one it should be rendering, it, we need to just put in the field. Uh, you're gonna realize that if the field is um, zero. We want to pretty much make it be, if field is 1, we need to render uh, the x, and if field is 2, we need to render o. So to do this, to achieve this, we're just pretty much going to add field plus 1. And what this is going to do, is it's going to add 1, so pretty much if, if, wait a minute. Um, if field is 1, we need to render uh, field minus one so the field is let's say <clears throat> player one which means that it is one we want to render the zero uh, image that is in this array so we just want to say minus one to make that happen for the width we just need to use the field width simply so it's going to be game dot field width for the height game dot field height observer is null and that's pretty much it. Now, one thing that you want to make sure doesn't happen is we want to make sure that we don't render it if it's free. So, we just want to check if field is equals equals to game dot free because that way it would just, well, not work. And we just want to put this. So, if it's not free, that's what I meant. And then we want to render it. This is pretty much, this should pretty much should work right now. So, if we run the game, we should wait a minute we haven't yet added anything into the array so let's just say we want an x to be on coordinates zero zero so let's go to field zero sorry uh fields zero zero so on the coordinate zero zero it won't have the player one and now this should we're gonna set it to player one and this should now render the this should now render X on the first field All right there, so let's check that out. And there we go, so we've got the X. Now, one thing we might want to do just for, you know, making it be a little bit better because, I mean, it's kind of bigger than it should be, so we're just going to make it a little bit smaller just to make sure that it doesn't overlap like that. So field width minus five maybe, and the field height minus five, and it's pretty much just going to do it. I mean, I'm not sure if this will exactly fix and make sure that it doesn't really overlap, as it might still overlap on the other sides. Um, but you can just play around with it, and it's not really as important. So that's pretty much done. We can add O there. Fields. We want to get the third field in the first row. So first row. Uh, third field in the first row pretty much means uh, three and three by two and zero is equal to player two and now it's gonna render an O or not. So we messed something up. Let's see what we've done. Um, we've put the X and the Y. Where did these come from? Okay, so what I've done is we need to multiply the X and the Y by the field by game dot field with because this just made it this this just rendered it one pixel to the right or one pixel down we don't want that we want it to uh, multiply by the field height here too and now once they're multiplied they should be in the right positions I hope so let's see and there we go 
Okay, it's not really the best position. I'm not entirely sure why, because I haven't really bothered with doing that really. Um, but you can just randomly put some of these, play around with it by yourself, pretty much. We can put here two and now two rendered. But this is pretty much the renderer for our game, and our render. <laughs> Our renderer is now done, pretty much, so in the next episode we're gonna be making either a server and taking the input inside, in, but you know, we're gonna see all that for now. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, so I hope that, you know, I hope that it was helpful. We'll see what we're gonna do in the next episode, I'm not entirely sure when it's gonna come out, but that's just for this video. Bye.